covenanting our nation Uganda to the purposes of God and to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the presence of the President and the First Lady, we dedicated the nation to God and then covenanted the nation to God for the next 1,000 years. An international movement which claims homosexuals are possessed by demons and purports to cure HIV and AIDS through faith, healing, and prayer has gained access to Uganda's top leaders and is engineering theocratic transformation of the nation. Key figures behind the internationally notorious Kill the Gays legislation now before Uganda's parliament are closely tied to this movement. For the global transformation's effort, Uganda is a prototype. Released in 2003, Transformations 3, The Quickening, was the third in George Otis Jr.'s Transformation video series. When the Transformations videos began circulating around the globe in the late 1990s, millions of people were confronted with a powerful proposition. God's transforming presence has become an active force in entire communities and even nations. On March 4, 2007, according to Uganda's State House website, President Yawuri Museveni and Uganda's First Lady Janet Museveni held an official state dinner for representatives of the International Transformation Network who had traveled from three continents to attend the event. The following is from the International Transformation Network's 2008 World Conference in Argentina. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Ahora, en el de Jesús, I take authority yo tomo over every spirit of lust, sobre todo espíritu de concupiscencia, pornography, pornografía, addiction, addicciones, homosexuality, homosexualidad, bisexuality, bisexualidad, perversion. perversión. So I want to tell you, we are not here for a nation. We are not talking about Uganda. We are talking about a continent. You don't understand. God has given us the key in Mama Janet and opened the doors of Africa as a continent to us. On March 8, 2007, the Museveni's hosted International Transformation Network CEO, Ed Silvoso. Jesus designed the church to be his agency on earth to destroy Satan's empire. Let transformation begin today. Welcome to Transformation in Newark, New Jersey. Welcome to Transformation Hawaii. Here we go! On page 167 of his 2007 book, Transformation, Ed Silvoso describes driving out gay demons with the power of Christian baptism. Quote, as soon as the now ex-gay man came up from the waters, he was struck by the power of God, evicting the demonic forces that had controlled him for so long and rewiring his psyche correctly to enable him to feel like a man again. Ed Silvoso's ITN is only one of several global transformation efforts. All of them spread the transformation movement ideology through a video series from the Sentinel Group, founded by George Otis Jr., who enjoyed direct personal access to Janet and Yuri Museveni while making his videos. The Lord gave us a word, declare war on witchcraft and idolatry. It became evident that there was a very strong witchcraft involved. This group of folks have beliefs in those ancestral spirits and so on. So it is important that uh, that angle is addressed. When you find a leadership that understands the sovereignty of God and begins to turn to God for the solutions of the things they can't solve, then you, you get this very strategic partnership between church and state. On New Year's Eve, 1999, Uganda joined the rest of the world in celebrating the arrival of a new millennium. This is the invisible hand that has moved us along and shaped our destiny. Ten weeks earlier, we First Lady Janet Museveni had invited people. several church leaders to a meeting. So when she came in, she told us she had a vision. And she had re requested that we dedicate the nation 
officially back to God. In the presence of the president and the first lady, we dedicated the nation to God and then covenanted the nation to God for the next 1,000 years. Covenanting our nation, Uganda, to the purposes of God and to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. The public, it seems, is fascinated with the story. In recent months, the Sentinel Group's Transformations documentaries have been seen by millions of viewers on secular television channels in Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Americas. The stories of transformation have attracted the attention of presidents and prime ministers, parliamentarians and mayors, businessmen and law enforcement officers. It's pleasing for me to see God beginning to shake up this country. Come and transform us. I see a new Cape Town. We enter this agreement with our God as Uganda. La hora de llegar ha llegado a Colombia. As of mid-2002, our research team was investigating no less than 175 transformation reports. And these are undoubtedly just the tip of George the George Otis's transformation videos promote the claim that there have been mass miracle cures of HIV and AIDS in Uganda. HIV negative, nanoreactive, there's no virus in your body. Then the rest of the symptoms start to disappear one by one. God had healed me totally. It I'm was a refrain now. heard thousands of times across Uganda. But as I talk to you right now, I have experienced over 372 AIDS patients being healed. Uganda has been recorded as one of the first countries to see a decline in HIV. We believe it's because of our prayer and we believe it's because of the love and the grace of God. It is also because Uganda has promoted abstinence and faithfulness as their primary weapons against AIDS. In the first two years since the U.S. funded Focus on Abstinence, new HIV cases in Uganda have doubled. The sad reality is that with the switch away from promoting condom use along with abstinence and faithfulness in marriage, Uganda's HIV rate has been rising. My first amazement was when I heard that the first lady had opened up a big office and they were promoting abstinence, but not only promoting abstinence, but saying abstinence works and condom use doesn't. In the fall of 2006, Ugandan First Lady Janet Museveni and her daughter Patience traveled to Argentina to attend the 16th Annual World Conference of Evangelist Ed Silvoso's International Transformation Network. In 2008, when Janet Museveni was unable to attend the 18th ITN conference, she sent the head of the Uganda Revenue Authority to deliver a speech Museveni had written. Oh, and Alan is the Commissioner General of the Uganda Revenue Authority. That means she's in charge of all the taxes. I'm just going to read the First Lady's statement. And I'm going to read it as she wrote it. Uh, I struggled with reading this statement because she was supposed to be here reading it herself. The Chief Executive of International Transformation Network, my brother Ed Silvoso, distinguished dignitaries, fellow participants at this conference, ladies and gentlemen. I count myself very fortunate to have been invited to this special gathering of God's people. Just take a moment. Take a deep breath. We have here the director of the Uganda Revenue Authority speaking on behalf of the First Lady whose daughter is the pastor of a church that is taking the point to transform Kampala. Let this moment sink in. As uh, uh, Ed was uh, mentioning, we are also training Pastor Patience Church. In the last eight months, uh, our, our congregation's name is Covenant Nations Church. And, and uh, she's brought us as part of her team to train the people. And so in the last eight months, we've been training the whole congregation in transformation principles because they are the ones leading the charge to the whole Kampala City of God process. About three years ago, is, uh, Brother Ed came to Kampala and held a conference. And uh, we had just started a church with Pastor Patience, who is my cousin. 
One of the attendees of Patience Museveni's church has been Ugandan parliament member David Bahati, who drafted and introduced Uganda's internationally condemned anti-homosexuality bill. Bahati's bill would mandate execution for HIV-positive Ugandans. It would also require Ugandan citizens to inform government officials of any friends, relatives, neighbors, or acquaintances who are gay. The penalty for non-compliance would be three years in prison. Ugandans accused of being gay who were turned into the government could face lifetime prison sentences. Co-sponsoring the bill, along with David Bahati, was Benson Obua Agwal. Both men are members of Apostle Julius Oyet's recently formed College of Prayer, Uganda, which played a major role in inspiring and organizing legislators who have backed the anti-homosexuality bill. Hello, I'm Apostle Julius Peter Oyet. I'm the president of College of Prayer in Uganda. Transformation is happening in Uganda right from the parliament. We launched College of Prayer in the parliament of Uganda and we have a great team of the Ugandan government being part of the College of Prayer. We have four campuses of College of Prayer in the parliament in Kampala City with the VIP pastors in Arua, in Gulu. Why I like College of Prayer? Because it mentors leaders. My vision for the College of Prayer is that we will have College of Prayer penetrate through the entire nation of Uganda. I've just returned from Rwanda and Burundi where I was talking to the members of parliament in Burundi and Rwanda and the VA pastors, VIP pastors in Chigali, Rwanda, so that the next year we take College of Prayer into Rwanda and Burundi and of course into Tanzania and into Kenya where already people have been attending the College of Prayer. Julius Oyet is close to American evangelist Oz Hillman who promotes the transformation movement goal of achieving Christian domination in business and the marketplace. Oyet has visited Hillman in the United States and Hillman has visited Oyet in Uganda. In keeping with transformation movement ideology, Oyet's church claims miracle healings of HIV and AIDS. Julius Oyet is the central star Star in the 2005 Sentinel Group Transformation video and Unconventional War, which also features Uganda's president, Yewuri Museveni. Reverend Oyet was invited to make his presentation to the president directly. It was a most interesting meeting because I, I could see that there were many things that the president had not known. At one point, President Museveni interrupted the briefing to summon his senior commanders. But more people joined us and they were all attentive, quiet. So it was like the top people, military bosses, who were there. One of the interested participants was General Aranda Nakairima, Supreme Commander of Uganda's Armed Forces. By now you know that, this, that it was not possible for me to stand here to read this speech in person, but the Lord at least availed me, my younger sister, Alan Kajina, to speak for me. Among you also is my younger brother, Werner Swart, and his wife. And now, um, at the moment, we are in the process of training those uh, 14,000 churches. And we're going to do it by district by district. There are 80 districts in the country. And How many churches? 14,000. 14,000. Scarred by civil war. Ravaged by disease and poverty. Uganda. A nation with a history of hardship and struggle. Yet, God is at work, mobilizing an army of pulpit and marketplace ministers who together are changing the spiritual climate of this land. We realized that the marketplace and the pulpit in Uganda needed to be united. And so they formed in Uganda what is now known as Transformation Network Uganda, which is basically an ITN chapter. And so we formed and constituted ourselves into what we call the Transformation Network Uganda, which is an interim committee of both marketplace and pulpit ministers. We focus so much on individuals, and yet Christ died to redeem all things. All things means all organizations, all businesses, land needs to be redeemed. And so, so land, real estate, business, all needs to be one for Christ. We as a fellowship have a program, uh, a vision to transform this nation. This new understanding led to church leaders asking those in the marketplace for forgiveness. And then we decided that we needed to have a conference. We needed to bring Ed into Uganda. We needed him to speak this message and, and make it a public thing. And so at that conference, which was so amazing, the first lady came. 
She thought she was just going to open and then leave, but she stayed through the sessions, and everything that she listened to really spoke to her. And then my wife had this crazy idea, let's invite the, cra the first lady of Uganda to Argentina. And uh, together with Alan, we, uh, Alan called her and said, would you consider coming to Argentina? This is 2006. And she said, yes, that'd be great, you know. And so the first lady came together with her daughter, Patience. And that was really an amazing thing because at that conference, uh, the first lady spoke her heart. At an AIDS conference in 2004, Museveni shocked well, activists I, 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 by denouncing method. condoms. Because we don't think that, that, that we can have permanently a condom society, a condom world. It was a complete reversal of policy. Signs promoting condom use disappeared from the streets of Kampala, replaced by billboards celebrating virginity. Many suspect that the born-again first lady was responsible for the change. Janet Museveni recently staged a virginity march in the capital of Kampala and has called for a national census of virgins. In his 2007 book Transformation, Ed Silvoso claimed HIV and AIDS rates in Uganda were still dropping, and on page 216 of the book, Silvoso wrote, quote, the Babylonian systems intentionally prefer to push a futile non-God approach that benefits no one but the manufacturers of condoms, as a Ugandan leader confided to me. You are not to fear threats. You are not to fear anyone that comes to intimidate because the Lord says, my hand is upon you. And you have built an altar of prayer. And you are first of all a prayer warrior. There are 80 districts in the country. And each district has formed a mini ITN. Which means four pulpit ministers, four marketplace ministers. And they will come to be trained in Kampala. And so we've started an academy called the Nation Transformation Academy. And we're going to be training all of those pastors and marketplace people into how to transform their communities. And we're, going to, we're doing that in partnership with Joe. And Brother Joe from Uganda. Let's give our brother a big hand. Now, Uganda is the heart of Africa. And I, and, and I believe, actually, that Africa is the heart of the world. And so, if the heart of, of Africa is restored, then Uganda will be restored. Once, once Uganda is restored, Africa will be restored. Once Africa is restored, the earth will be restored. And, and so when you invest in Uganda, we are talking about reaching the entire world. And out of Uganda, as life came for HIV, so will life come, spiritual life, for the whole world. The, the whole world is using Uganda's model of fighting HIV. So I just wanted to bring that into perspective and so that you know that Uganda is critical and important for world conquest, would I say. Thank you. What a precious brother. We love you, brother. Tomorrow morning, we are talking about a new economic order, the keys to the elimination of systemic corruption. And I want to give you advance warning. God has chosen you to be the implementer of this new world order. And I said in my book that Uganda is poised to be the first nation to be transformed. And I believe that because our sister is there, because you are there, because tax collection has been sanctified, because the central bank has been sanctified, because the Ministry of Ec Economy or Finance, whatever the correct name is, is being sanctified. And because our sister, the First Lady, is praying. I believe that we are witnessing a major breakthrough in nation transformation. God not only has brought together a team around the First Lady, she's an MP. Uh, you know, she has the legal authority, the political authority. And so would you convey to the First Lady a love, a gratitude, and tell her some of us are going to be there in December, okay? And, but we are not going to go for a visit. We left our heart in Uganda. <laughs>